Dirty old town, dirty old town. I'm gonna make me a big sharp axe. Shining steel tampered in the fire. Gonna cut you down like an old dead tree. Dirty old town, dirty old town. I'm at my love by the fire. Kiss my girl by the gosh yard wall. Dirty old town. The singer, Tom MacDonald. This video film is part of a community arts project that took place in the markets area of Belfast in the late summer. A number of people interested in the markets decided early on in the year to hold a festival. It had been many years since the last one. The area was going through massive redevelopment. A lot of people had left the area. There were many newcomers. Redevelopment had left huge empty spaces and ugly dereliction. Old people had been uprooted from their homes and their wee streets and integrated into modular architecture. Employment based on the food and distribution industries had fallen to 75%. The hay markets, the fruit markets, the bakeries had gone. The festival committee were worried about their social base. They wanted to bring people together and they succeeded, as we shall see. And approaches were made to the Community Services Department of the City Hall and to the Community Arts Department of the Arts Council to establish an arts project and to, to employ a coordinator. These agencies agreed to jointly fund the project and the City Hall would pay the wages. The project was to support the, the rekindling of the festival and to celebrate the history of the area and encourage the acquisition of new skills. It was to establish a festival newspaper, to stage an original cabaret, to record the history of an area in the exhibition, to introduce video as a means of a more intimate communication in the area. This video will be shown in all the pubs and clubs, the community centres, and will be on loan to the sick and disabled, the infirm, to view in their own homes. The final project was to silk screen print thousands of bright images and fabric to fly across the empty spaces and bring the people together. We decided to print a poster which announced the return of the festival. It was called The Market Bites Back. One of the first things how people could re-establish contact was to publish a newspaper. We relied heavily on illustrations by a local artist, Joe Kane, whose work had concentrated on the recording of the buildings and characters in the market. We interviewed a number of the older residents and published their stories. They were also able to show how the area had changed. One of the most particular of these characters was Maggie Mullivan or Maggie Logue. Well, I'm simple and I lived on. Do thou red heart. Do thou poor thou. Genesis. Genesis was good for you, no matter where you went. You got it. How much are they paying you for this? Aye? How much are Guinness paying you for this advertisement? You know, as they're on the boat round here, I'm telling you, the trees are half dying, they're crawling, and they're getting a sweet tablet for this part, and a wee tablet for that part, and a wee tablet for another part. I take nothing but a good bottle of Guinness. Ha, man, I'm the girl looking at the bottle and looking at the stuff at the way home. I was asking you about the customers, but uh, you're only talking about the, um, well, just what you were drinking. Is it, was there anybody else in the pubs when yeah, you were there? Or just? Yeah, no, it was hold up there. And I tell you, you know, there was a wee woman and she was nice, she was just closed. Our last day was what there was a wee woman that called her Martha McNally. And she's just sitting at the foot of the zaps or sitting at the counter. And I had just left three before that. I had them snapped too. 
<laughs> Don't do thing, Joe. What's yeah. snap mean? Uh, well, for the chicken. <laughs> but it just would have took me to, but I was... I was away, and I was sorry I was away, but I loved the ground, and I loved Nick Mooney's, and I loved Tommy Cam's, and I heard Nolligy Toner's. That's Nolligy Terror, too, that you called him between me one month he was Nolligy Toner, and the next month he was Nolligy Terror, but they were great pubs. They were homely and happy. And I did him again, he too was good old pub. Hour. He's just away there, man. He's only way up to Bangor. He's getting, he's getting an arm on belt. It was an arrow. <laughs> well, that's all what I could tell you, though, more than the fuel gold. What well, do you think? Now, you were talking earlier on about uh, the, the, this place, the new, the new houses, and uh, now what do you think of this? Well, I tell you, like, they're all right for them, it's like, uh, would suit them and come on. It would all right if you got peace. But you don't get peace. You don't get no comfort here. You're right every day, every night up the entries. That's you're all right the people out uh, has their houses outside. But God help the old people that's living in entries. But that's what these are. That's your comfort. Owns ant entries where children Checking the doors, breaking the windows, more than ye. I wish I only had some of them. Cause I'm have a queer night, I'm six years in that flat. And I never mean the night yet that I hadn't to go out to save my windows. What do you think should be done about it? Well, it should be something done about it. Uh, because another thing, I don't care because I'm near out. I'm ready for dying. Because of, from the public houses, it's all shut the property. I, I begin to lose sleep. <laughs> we'll have to see what Guinness is going to do about this. <laughs> so I uh, have to do something about the Guinnesses. Have to do something. Well, I'm gonna, where is my girl, my Guinnesses, for her? I sure I would more tell us about that according to Charlotte. <laughs> the French man. The French man from, and he lives in 29. Upper Stamford Street. And this, on the, the left hand side, is Elizabeth. Yes, Elizabeth. Elizabeth McAllister. Yeah, yes, Elizabeth McAllister. And your name was Donnelly before you got married? Yes, Elizabeth Donnelly. And yes. you were the first person to see George? He, he was. A very, nobody else, only me, seen him coming. And he was lovely the way he was dressed. You know. How were you dressed? I was a wee self hat and a wee cane like Charlie Chaplin. Everybody used to watch me with him doing every folly on the street and all. Me not. <laughs> Were you on your own? Well, when I went out on my own, you see, when I left the house to go on about and look at Tom, Dick and Harry, I used to have a wee soft hat and a cane. But did you come over with your mother, did you? Yes. Your mother was French? Yes, she was French. And she married uh, McAllister? McAllister in 1916. 1916. Uh, at Rouen. And then my mother, in 1920, she had to get married in St. Malachy's. And it's, what do you call it? Only Savage yes, I'm sure. was a, uh, what do you call it, witness? Best man? No, she was a girl at home. <laughs> the bridesmaid. Yes, bridesmaid. She had to get very married again, you see. Married in France and married to you. Whereabouts in France were you born? Uh, Armand. Normandy. And do you, do you get back? Have you ever been back since? Oh, I've been back oh, four times, five times. Yes. I flown over. Next thing we took the boat. And after I talked to Boots another two, three times. But it's too, too far to travel, you know. It's two, two boots and three train. And then when you arrive in Rouen, you have to take a bus. This and the, what do you call it, banlieue d'Arvon. It's about four or five miles outside Rouen, the city. You, you, 
you lived out in the country. No, no, I, I want my more sister live in the country. She had a big farm, uh, Blasville sur Mer. What was your impression when you got off the boat and came into the markets? Oh, I thought it was lovely when I seen the quayside and the big buzz, and, and when I come to the market, there's only a small house and. No uh, land, no land. I was going to say something. What were you going to say? <laughs> she the old market. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a shock, she, was it? As an English, an Irishman, he used to be in the British Army. Mm. What do you call it? He used to live in Stamford Street. Ah, come on, did you? You were, you, were, you were telling me earlier that he, his uh, English wasn't too good when he came here. What did he call the, uh, the big building in the centre of the town? Oh, he never ever the, the shitty hole. <laughs> what was it? The shitty hole. The shitty hole. <laughs> Has he improved at all? Oh, he's all right, Bruce. <laughs> the shitty hole, he was um, What was the first uh, word you learnt in English? Uh, well, that's the first word I spoke to the people me no speak. <laughs> so. Just met uh, somebody who said to give their regards to you, something called Silver McKee. Uh, Silver McKee, I, I knew his far well and more well. Mm. Yeah, we were just talking to him around in the uh, Central Bar, and I said it was coming around here. Foolish, he's a foolish. Well, a good fellow, but foolish. All imports. Ah, oh. people? Surely. All the vegetables. Well, I wonder if he was left now, I know him. That's all. No. Money, money is there. A handful. See, well, that, well, that's me, a handful, isn't it? A handful. A handful. Where? Well, where, where did the rest of them come from? Ah, uh, you asked a question, eh? Aye. Imports. From where? Uh, here and there and everywhere. Why was that? Why, why for the market? There's not enough market people here. What, the one, well, uh, here? Some of in the houses. Strangers got them. Outlaws, in laws, I don't know. That's right. I know a few of them. I, 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 I don't want to let them tell you, Gustus. I don't have my own. The old story, I probably won't could do. He isn't from the markets. No. Another import. Talk to you know well. So is Ardra there, too. You know, we're out there, what's that? Uh, uh. What the flies in that again, you know? What are flies in that again? <laughs> No slap in that end of the market and beat him for the course of the hook. I know it's a hook. I'm a hawk. Great tonight, hawk. What does he mean by saying that he's a hawk? A hawk. Flies here and there. I know. Hey, but you want a house in the market? Pardon? Do you want a house? I'll have a flat. I think it was paid to one. But there's no room. Only all, all imports. But I, I don't want to look, I look after myself, no matter where I go. Always did. I was always Lone Ranger. No matter where I went, I took a gang and went. I went. I didn't want to do it, I told myself. That's what I always say. I was never no gang enough for me. And I went done, I told my own. And I wouldn't ask no one to do what I thought I couldn't do myself. That's to tell you the truth. <laughs> but but you, look, it's, you talk talking that stool out there, look. What, what the you, they couldn't listen in the first place because you're a market man. <laughs> sure, he's a woman of a market man. Northern Ireland. What school is that? That was Milk Ford Street School where all the grip. Fuck, I'm going to come. <laughs> <laughs> it says one time. It says in Coleman School, all shit and scholars. I've never seen a shit and scholars in my life. Nobody else school, anyway. Where is where's, Where was it in Coleman School? Liza Street. Liza Street. Oh. I think that's the one you were supposed to be at. Ah, uh, but that was signing for, 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 for a bottle of medicine in the barber's shop. But the barber lived across my public house. It was a bottle of wine in the medicine bottle it was. That was his medicine. Mm -hmm. Say your prayers, boys. Then I'd crack a he was thinking the medicine. Oh. Corey Gray. The monster. 
He was drinking this during class. Don't you know? Uh, put your hands up for your prayers. Uh, Seeing who's slapping you. Hold your heart out. There's a key in one hand. Bang! I just left hand. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Aggressive. Don't you know? <laughs> That's going to happen. Look, I remember one day it was going bad. Right. A man said to me, I'll give you a cow. I said, give me a cow. What's wrong with a cow? <laughs> he said, I don't know. I think she's why the battle. She's why the battle. So said, where's this cow? He says, in Hollywood. I went and put a hut on her. And I walked around along the road. Along with a great pal of mine, Ginger McGill, he's dead now, poor Ginger. Ginger McAllister. We took this cow up Market Street to a penthouse in it. And I walked in and there was a big kitchen house. And I sent Ginger for the butcher. I did some people too. Full of things myself. Hire Morgan. So anyway, I him come in anyway with a butcher gear on him. The lot. Because the cow we called the scullery, we had the scullery. And she up in the back room, looked a couple of boards up, got the ropes down, and I hit the cow with a hammer and got it up. And he opened the cow. Opened the cow up. The nice. I did, sure. He kept in the week. Yeah, we do his scullery. He died. Let it go with the blood blood. And she left the gritting. The wee small gritting it was. So him and I sitting out, and we're drinking away and drinking away all night. So the, neighbor, the neighbors passed the next morning. They said, they said, toilet flushing. They were shouting, no, all it's coming up red water. It was red blood. The blood couldn't get away. You were dreaming it down? Ah, I'm going to sell the cow to the next morning. Thanks for the gold, we've got to drink of it. Anyway, well, we'll get back to you because we know we've talked about silver around there. So, the, your, your relations had a shop, this wee shop. Did you live beside it or near the shop? Or did you, you rent it? The petite door from the shop. We live. Did you rent it? No, no, we are paying it a week. How much was this one we want first? Seven, seven, sixpence a week in 1920. Out of 12 and sixpence? No, that's seven, sixpence the rent was. Yes, but you only got 12 and sixpence. That's all I got. No, I didn't have. Who owned them? Seventy years. Who, who owned the houses? No, he's he's done with the shop here. No, but who owned the house that you rented? Oh, the bishop owned it. The bishop? Yes, the late, very nice the late bishop owned it. Philbin? He used to live in Northern Road. Something will die. Ah, somewhere the bishop owned the house. Yes. Charged you that, right? All the old um, house in, in Vernon Street was owned by the bishop. And, and who did he get to collect his money? Oh, was, what do you call a collector, did he? Every week. Every week. So many rooms did you have there? A two room, and a front room, and a kitchen. And the bedroom. Two beds are much too. Oh, it's but uh, small, small and damp. When we left in 1980, it was a good job. Them house, them house was too old. It was very damp. And these years living now, so we should have get them 50 years ago. 50 years ago, they're great. What, the I know, the deer, the warm little deer, it was all uh, lovely, lovely. So the electricity board has taken the position, of the position of the bishop, has he? Well, I don't know, them was all mm -hmm. sold, yes. Of some, these places own them now. Who's Yes. All times have changed, I'm um, 60, 64 years here now. And time is a change. Time is a change. For the better? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, 50 years ago, used to be great neighbors, like, you know, you was a new one, but now, 
You see, this street here, I don't know if I, if I know about half a dozen people now. Mm. All strange to me. I see people pass every day that I never see before. I don't know where they're from. Uh, was my or not, I don't know what. Muslims they had one huge Oh, I knew that a people. Mm. But there was certainly a, a lot of people who came to the exhibition. We were very, very surprised at the numbers of people who came to it. This whole school came out with the wee notebooks. What was really exciting about it was that people treated the exhibition as their own. It was not like a dead museum or an art gallery. But speaking of museums and art galleries, the, we got a lot of stuff and help from the Elton Museum. We got lots of prints from the Welsh collection. The Travellers, the Festival itself. We also showed drawings of the old buildings. And we also included the, uh, the video. The video was unedited, but it still attracted lots and lots of people. Have you seen all the photographs, Shawnee? Yeah. And what do you think of them? They're brilliant. And what's your name? Andrea Murda. And what do you think of them, Andrea? The cracker. And, uh, you, we'll come to the next little girl. What's your name? Vanilla Neil. And what do you think of the, the photographs, Vanilla? They're gorgeous. Do you think that the market has changed much since those photos, some of the older photos were taken and what it looks like now? Yes. How do you think it's changed? A little bit. And what's your name? Lisa Weatherall. And what do you think of the photographs, Lisa? They're pr very pretty. What do you think of the older ones? They're very good. Did you see all Joe Kane's drawings? Yes. And what do you think of those? They're, they're done very well. And what did you think of the festival? It was very good. I wasn't bid. You were educating some of them about it. I didn't bid. Seven of them just. Tell us the story. I could see months for it. <laughs> what was the story? <laughs> what was the story? Was we had, a, we there had a dance or something. There's a fella called Crabber Scott. He married a nurse. He married a nurse. He said they were giving her dope. So he said to me, would you come along me along with Father Harlem a cousin, hold the silver cab. So I fell off. So the big car they had, the big number on the top of it. Big advertising number. So I met them with anyway, and we set sail for Queen's University. To, to take the dope out of this woman? To fix two of these students along with him, these boys. So anyway, scuttling up, I let these boys out, out to come, where was, this is your life then. The fight started. Mm. Because of all, we all got three months apiece. Well, what on earth did you do to them? Give him a dig or two. Just a dig or two? Ah, Three sure. months for a dig? Ah, sure. Oh, it's dear, nice. What was the damage? Well, because you had broken jaws and still eyes and all that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Opening their minds. I've got to know you're there, you know. Uh, uh, what, 
Was somebody give me a dig here about the 21 Club? Tell me about it, because I know. Well, we'll say that that happened. I was in that morning. I was always sick. I'm sick every morning. I'm coming out to drink. I'm a liquor drink. Sit him on it, but a certain mark had been that way. I heard the man's dead now. And I was sitting in the company. He says, don't be that company to reckon back. What are you at, I says? He says, Silver, I'm marking your card. Say, I'm sitting here for an hour to eat. Don't be sitting there, he says, now it's seven o'clock. Find yourself another seat. Say, fair enough. She's up to the old character man called Section Blake. They got a big form sitting along the wall. He put it down, upside down, and they got him off for a sit-down. A fellow called Stasha Quinn. And they got a billiard cue in each hand. And Stasha could sing right like. And they start rolling this form. And Stasha started singing, cruising down the river. Yeah. Said, finished out of the way. So why he goes away and go back again? More about seven o'clock, and the fellow there singing. And Saxon bounces up, out of the blue. He says, you've heard nothing yet. Just that door flew open. In come three gunmen. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> oh, this is your life. Shut for you. The club that night. Like I tied two of them down the stairs. That was Barney Wilson, a big fellow called Screwball O'Hare. And the fellow was sitting, a mercenary man. He shut in the hip. He says, I'm dead. <laughs> he shut him dead. He shut in the hip. What were the shot for? You're not made your own business, you're supposed to talk to the school. That's what happened. Uh, I was shutting myself from nothing. What was this story in it? Oh, so I was over nothing. I can be killed as usual, boxed as usual. To hit up for all way. This fellow in the back one night. He says, Wait, I want you. Send me for it. So she came. Oh. I took a day, but I'm away diving at him. Oh, he hit me, bang. So I fell in the bar, look at the hold of him. I held on to him. All right. I ran a muck in the bar that night. He ran a muck? Ran a muck. Oh, I'm a muck. 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 The Pippin also says that Irish one goes mad after being shot. Goes mad? Oh. Oh. Hmm. Did they shoot you? Shot in the middle. There. That was the boy. It's all right. What if you need born? Stop him. Did you have to get out? Tell you hit the I got up and walked out. It's a nice hospital. I got up and come out. I got up and come out. It's all right. Why did they shoot you? Oh, good. I had some fellow I shouldn't have one night. So he said, oh, I don't know. I didn't know. But this, my own cousin shot me. But this lad, I'm not his friends and that. This lad he is. So is his brother too. Good lad. And in fact, they're cousins of mine. There you go. But she has the old story. You always hurt the one you love. That's an old story. Oh. No. Oh, sorry, no more. Mm -hmm. All right, tell us something. It's a pretty bad day today, but something you've got something about the weather, special story, stormy weather. A decent fella. Now, who's he? Jimmy Wilder from Shackle Road. Decent lad. Well, what was, what was, what was your relations with him then? Well, I haven't thought about him while I was, and I thought he wasn't. So I went to Shackle Road before them. Up in the middle of the road? Oh, Shackle Road. It's not a tender fight. Women built in the brushes, shovels, the head. The women did? Ah, him and I thrashed up in, in the naval club, digging all night on. But a good fellow, I must say that. That's George with his sister in front. Yes. Yes. What is the, what is the French for markets? Le Marché. Marché. Le Marché. That's my cousine of Francaise. French, French cooking? Cousin, cousin. French cousin? cousin. I thought you said French cousin. Cousine. <laughs> cousine, cousine. And uh, you call on, mon oncle, uncle, mon oncle, en français. <laughs>
they'll introduce themselves because you're in disguise. Who's this? I'm Mrs. Morris. Where are you from? 48 Upper Stamford Street. You'd tell him to the police, wouldn't you? What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Sally McGarden. <laughs> What's the company? <laughs> it's not your real name, is it? Mr. Rice, Mr. Rice, Mr. Rice. Mr. Two Rice. Okay. Are you from the markets? Yes, I'm from the market, yes. How long have you lived here? Pardon? Uh, I'm on about 12 years or so. Is this the first festival you've been out in the markets? No, it's the second one. Second one. When was the last one? Uh, 1975. You enjoyed it very much. You enjoyed it very much. Anna, Anna, but I thought wisely because I got wide years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Sally? <laughs> I hope you're trying to drink. <laughs> Sally, you've been uh, working on organizing this festival. What do you think about it? Well, I think it's come off very, very well. It's, uh, it's what, nearly, what, seven years since you had a last one? Yeah. And how do you think this is going compared to that? Uh, well, I think this one is brilliant. That's great. Now, who, who are all the uh, young people who are working with you here? Do you know their names or would you introduce themselves? Well, you can go and see them yourself. What's your names? Sean McKavna. Sean Smith. Sean McCartan. Turn around and face the camera and tell us your name. Danny Monaghan. Joseph Simpson. Turn around and face the camera. Oh. Joseph Simpson. John O'Neill. Who's that victim that just went past there? Damien! Wow. See that? Wow. Did you get run over by the horses? <laughs> no. What happened to you? It's in the war. It's in the war. Which war? The Falklands. The Falklands War. <laughs> Which side were you on? The British. And uh, did you just win or lose? Lose. <laughs> Market area of Belfast. I, I say that we like the punks, and I, my favourite group is Exploited. Thanks very much. Thanks. What's your name? David McHugh, Seth Bishop. Now, what you were wanting to grab hold of the microphone, come on in and speak to it. What on earth are you dressed up as? What? What are you, what are you dressed up as? A bin. A bin? The inside or the outside? The inside. You're the inside of the outside of the bin. Mm -hmm. Can you follow, or, uh, am, or am I taking you right? Mary. What's, <laughs> your, what, what's your name? Treasure Bar. You from, you're from the markets, are you? Yeah. Which street? Upper Stamford Street. How far away is that from here? It's up, 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 up at the top of the street. God, smell that bin. Smelly <laughs> walks in. <laughs> right, Bobby's a big nose. In the interest of public hygiene, we better actually close this interview. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, what on earth are you being dressed up? You're in the fancy dress competition then? <laughs> no. <laughs> Is this your real clothes? Why do you dress like this? He's one of the blues brothers. He's one of the blues brothers. Have you seen that film as well? Yeah. Great, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, can you... Fancy dress parade was a great success as well. The bunting was designed and printed by over 20 people at the Crescent Arts Centre. To introduce you to Elaine Thomas, who's been running the silkscreen workshop for the Markets Festival. She's going to tell us what, what they've been doing here, how long they've been doing it, and the people who've been involved. Elaine. 
Right, well, we've been working here for almost a month now, um, cutting up material into triangles, which is three girls, uh, Geraldine, Siobhan and Claire, came up to do this. And then we have um, Josie, Pat and Steve and Ducky, who came up and been helping print. And we must have done something like over 3,000 these triangles, and we've had lots of people involved in uh, cutting stencils, different ones for each run, you know, it's about 150 a time. So we're just going to start off print, reprinting the poster which was designed for the festival. I'm going to be doing it on cloth this time. So if you put the screen down, you can start. just to make sure it's stuck and also to blend in the colours a bit. What do you what do you call this process mixing the colours? Um that's the netting. <laughs> right, that should say it. Lift up the screen. of uh, five bales of cloth that have been Ew. chopped up <laughs> and some nearly a month of printing. You don't want to finish, do you? Tina was also in show at the parade, otherwise known as Chrissy Farmer. This is her story. Uh, what about these people, uh, these old residents of the market? You, you must know someone there at the moment. Oh, yes. It was Maggie Jane Freem. She lived at the top of the Stanfield Street. She used to have all the pigs, blathers outside along the whole door. And it was Gracie Moore. And Dorothy Moore, her father used to have all the hay and send all the hay for it. And all the carts from all over used to come at six and five o'clock in the morning. And then when they were coming out, when they were so we used to get behind it and pinch the hay off the back of the carts. Look okay. Maggie Jane Freen's goats. And Dorothy Moore had some goats too. And then my own great aunt was Mary Marson. And we used to always sit round the buckets to fix the food for the pigs. And she used to say, take those tea leaves out of those buckets, for those tea leaves will destroy my pig's stomach. <laughs> That's very, very good. Now tell me, there was a moment when you used to sell pig's feet and an elder and things like that. That was Mrs. Conley uh, of Werner Street. She used to pig. That was, Ma that was Maggie Conley. Maggie Conley. And she also sold Elder. That was Maggie Elder then? Maggie that Elder, she really... That was, the only, and that was the thing she always got called was Maggie and not Maggie Conley. The people in the market really knew their names by the first name, not by that other name. Mrs. or Mama, that. It was always the first name. They liked their first name. Maybe that's because they were all good dealers at the market that they liked their first name. Going to the market, you never see her anyone saying, Mrs. here or Mrs. there. You just were called Maggie, Jenny, or whatever your name was. Well, is there anything else you could tell me about around the markets at all? Chris, I, you must have seen some changes in your time. Uh, I don't know. Not as many changes as we've seen now. What about these new versions? Do you like them at all? What do you think yourself about them? No, I hate them. You don't like them? No. 
Was there any two dear is it? Well, people, I don't... People's, people's changed a lot there, what? Well, I don't know about dear, but uh, I'm bravely up in the age, and, and I wouldn't want to go for everybody seems to go into them flats that seem to go out again in the coffin. Well, so I don't think I'd bother with their new houses. Well, then you're going you're gonna to stay on the other side of the market, yes. then. Well, what are you going to do when they get the new houses over in Hamilton State? What are we going to do then? But our houses are not coming down. Well, our houses are really theatrical people's houses. In fact, as far as I know, Charlie Chaplin slept in the house that I am in now. When he came to, in the Hippodrome, in the Opera House. Yeah, you remember going to see these people, didn't oh, you? Oh, yes. Uh, they must have been good times. Oh, they were. But the best one was with Gone with the Wind. It was the best picture I ever enjoyed. Well, that's Clark Gable. Oh, yes. Right. Well, I said he was good in his time. Oh, he was a smasher. Aye. <laughs> well, I, I used to go with my Aunt Maggie up to the Emperor. We used to sell the ap candy apples. We used to sell the... We had a handcart and we stood at Polar Square, isn't that what you call it? Polar Square. Polar Square, right. And Aunt Maggie and I sold the apples and the oranges and bananas and... It were the happiest days of our life. And I also lived with my aunt Maggie McAllister, who owned, owned Alec the Goose. And he used to run after me and come up the stairs and pull the bread off the table and would nip me aunt Maggie's legs and then come down again and wall us right out to the middle of the square and wait till the buses would pass. I can't say. Well, was it such a thing that the policeman used to go out in the middle of the road and stop a traffic that Alec across the road? Yes, that's quite true. Aye. And Eric would have stood and then went back and watered his tail in there as if he owned Crummock Square. Uh, and tell me, had a wee bow round his neck? Yes, a wee black bow. And sometimes he would have had a collar too. And he was very friendly to everyone. It didn't matter who they were or where they came from or what they were. Uh, and did he take a drink at all? This, this he did. Stuff? He liked the wee taste of air out of the wee black cans that the men used to drink when they were fit, fixing the streets. Uh, and he was, he was killed this poor, poor... Yes, he was knocked down. He was knocked down. I heard he was, yes. Oh, I got a light there. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yes, I remember the talk of this, uh, this year, but I, like the goo I like the duck. There was no duck called like the duck. It's like a gander. I think it was. It's like a gander. Maggie, and Maggie, uh, McKellister owned them. Oh. Right, somebody talking about that, uh, Not long Tina. ago, but he Tina, do you know Tina? He wasn't a, a duck at all, he was a gander. A gander? Oh, well, sure. Not got many eggs out of him? No, but he gave him how to get eggs, you know. Well, that was that. Then, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a man on about Marcus that up and down for years and years and years. Up in your door to get a bit of bread. Yeah, yeah. Queen of the Calder. Long the man called Joe Murdoch. Did you ever work in the music halls? No, I, I, no, I wouldn't see them every night. Every night? They called the Empire Ghost. The Empire Ghost? It's not really the Empire. Do you remember Dr. Hunter's circus? Well, and I worked with Dr. Hunter too. Well, the horses? Good old decent man he was. Uh, I read the mule for him too. The mule? Ah, the original mule. On the stage? On the stage, yes. And part I, of the, the, I, the air circus? I was outside man for him. And I told him one night, say, I'm going to write this down still. He used to jump on, jump off, you see. But you're going to fall right, you know, you're going to be a fall, you had it the wrong road. Right. So I found him one night, for the right to stand still. So him and I finished up anyway, along with the band, along with the drums and music men, wrecking the whole place. You fell into the pit? Ah, sure I. But come in again, bud, go again. Did you? Ah. Then I fought the kangaroo in the empire. You did not? Did, sure I. And who won? Oh, uh, no decision. <laughs> no decision. Hit me dig with his tail. I wonder what hit me. I thought that <laughs> how the clock fell in. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, did you do it just the one night? Oh, I've done it several nights. With the uh, kangaroo? Uh, the lad. Did you, you didn't hit it, did you? Oh, what could I do? Oh, you must, you must have it back, you know. You must, <laughs> come on, Toby, take it easy. But it wasn't taking it easy. I heard, uh, I heard you hit the old animal once. I had an old bull one time, pull him down, it's all right. Well, it was really him somewhere too. What would you hit the bull for? Uh, well, well, he's going to hit me. What else could I do? Where was this? 
And how long's your dad? When you crack him with your fist? I'd have done the work I'd do. <laughs> what did you fancy I had? <laughs> so, uh, what about uh, your uh, your relationships with the police authorities then? Look, I was, the police wasn't too bad with me, you know. I left them alone sometimes, but sometimes I didn't, you know. Remember when then the head came one time? What's the name? Head, uh, head, head Brennan. Right. Come take me to the house. And I wouldn't come in the stairs. And he, he just took us, got the button to go, the police will take me out of the house. So you're not to take me out. But he said he would. He took the stairs, and he was down the stairs again, the whole night. So I got him down to the door, and I went, I learned to miss what a good woman she was. She says, please, don't, son. So he put his hand in through the door to get his hand from the head. So he put his hand through the door, and I closed the door in his hand. And he's holding the door, and I bit his thumb. <laughs> and I yelled and squealed. <laughs> I opened the door and he pulled his hand out and locked the door. So I heard him send to this place. Let him go, he said, we'll see him tomorrow. Did they come back? I came back the next morning, mob handed. But I went, I went to go along with him. I went to the bars along with more. I cried enough, he said, he spoke well about me that morning in the court. The fiend, great. Have you ever been inside? Oh, for a was deep, a gang warfare. Gang warfare? Oh, I... In Belfast? Dunmore Park. I still fought Buck Alec. Did you fight Buck Alec? Knocked him out in one dig. <laughs> <laughs> in Dunmore Park. At Dunmore Park. And I stopped the dog out and race that night for the first, that race. And I said to fight him, I muckled Jimmy Kelligan, refereed the fight. Had him on dig me. I could fell like a shovel. That was all over. Bad. But what was the gang were for then? Ah, uh, Dunmore Park. She was looking a bit people for not pardoning them. They wanted to pardon it. They wanted to attack someone. Right. And I said, well, I'm right. So then it started. I got a pontoon of that. I said, that come to him. Uh, How long were you inside for? 21 months for a pontoon. What is pontoon? 21 months. Oh, is that what it means? Of course. Oh. And where about to serve that in the crumb? Crumb no, that. That crumb was all right. Would you like to go back in again? I would not. <laughs> Touch wood. <laughs> but they, they are leaving you alone now. The philosopher began to speak. I do not see any necessity in nature for policemen, nor do I understand how the custom first originated. Dogs and cats do not employ these extraordinary mercenaries, and yet their quality is progressive and orderly. The cabaret had wound up the festival into a frenzy. The crop of gold took five the policemen. Some distance down the road, the policemen halted. The night had fallen before they effected their capture, and now, in the gathering darkness, they were not at ease. In the first place, they knew that the occupation upon which they were employed was not a creditable one to a man, whatever it might be to a policeman. Suddenly, the boy spoke in a whisper. Oh, they're going to hang them out! And he burst into tears. <laughs> Oh, I sure that you can't help it. She dropped quickly on her knees and opened her arms. Come on over here, Mama, we can't help it. The boy ran to her. You're going to hang the man now! What boy? Ah! Said Sean again in a strangled tone. <laughs> what is it now? Says she, the sergeant testily. <laughs> no, what does I owe for, Edna Bluffhead? Hey, it's a leprechaun! He's gone away! <laughs> when I was hitting the man, I forgot all about the leprechaun. He must have run into the hedge. Oh, sergeant! Don't say anything to me now! Hunt said the sergeant, and the four men moved on through the darkness in a silence which was only skin deep. And we have the son, John Irwin. <laughs> and his much troubled mother, Dolores Ray. The agitated constable, Kieran Walsh. The philosophical leprechaun, Jared McLaughlin. And Sergeant Paddy Lismore. Sean McKnight introduces Podrick Faith, a native of the markets and a poet. He's internationally well known 
lived in America, filmed in Germany, speaking for the first time in the markets. Now, this is the Batty Kid sitting on the forest on the markets, and uh, he's frightened, he's terrorized, he's successfully terrorized, and uh, his granny is terrorizing him, and he's sitting on the forest on the markets, and it's called First Movement. Low clouds, yellow in the mist, wind, sift on far off arms, drift hazily. I was born on such a morning, smelling of the bone yard. The smoking chimneys over the slate tops, the wayward storm birds, and to the east where morning is the sea, and to the west, where morning is, the sea, threatening with danger, and it would always darken suddenly. at which you can distribute in the direction of the singer if you feel that the songs deserve it. <laughs> Sean McGormick, please.
not well like God helped him. I met him and he was only a poor orphan. He had neither farm nor nobody belonged to him. So I thought I would take him and get married. You also give him uh, ten other friends? Yes, also ten and I we got married and we took a wee room. And uh, that wee room was only a half a crown a week. And I'm going to tell you, he was all what he earned. He, he, wouldn't, he couldn't earn the week's wages, but nine mil money helped all, all, all right out. My money helped me, no matter where I went, and my father, mother, and my brothers and sisters helped me. So I'm telling you, I had a good, great life. I had it hard, and I had it good, and I had it every way. But I was always happy, always happy. So that's me, and I was a good dancer, singer, I was everywhere and anywhere, and everybody knows me. And I love everybody the same as they love me. So my, my, that's my life. Right. Well, Annie, they want to know what your age is. What? You were born in 1885. I'll be 97 in October. You're 96 now. And I want to know where you started school. My street school. That was before the convent. That was before the convent, aye. Good way before the convent. Yeah. And then now, we went to the convent school after that. Went to the convent school till I was 14 here. Now, I want to know if you remember any of the old characters that was the market. Hi. Such as Robbie John Baldy. That was one on, that was only used one. To play, used to play bingo on the street? He used to play bingo at night on the street, the stools, yes, right? the stools. Ah. We used to sit on the crib pad in the summertime. And the daughter used to yes. crack the money. And then the two Peters used to stand when they come and walk around, when they were walking around, they would have stood at the thing and I watched them playing the bingo. That wasn't bingo then, was it? No, no, it was ours. Who's it? It's Hersa. That's what we were playing, Hersa. And it was all? It was all for a laugh. It was all for a laugh, too. Yeah. For they never bothered themselves with them. They were very good. And what was used to be a hip now? It was only a hip now. The panny for a full house. Panny for a full house. Yes. And was there many playing? Oh, God, aye. There was just two sides. 